Has anyone ever given you a bouquet of roses as a gift? Most people would agree that it's quite the romantic gesture. But do we actually know why? Why are roses, of all things, associated with love and romance, when they can just as easily be used for a funeral? The answer lies in yet another Victorian tradition, whose remnants have carried over to our modern age. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Historodame, and today we're discussing the secret language of flowers. Floreography, or the language of flowers, has been practiced in cultures all across Europe and Asia for centuries. Assigning meaning to flowers is something that dates all the way back to the early editions of the Hebrew Bible. And botanical symbolism has played a large role in many famous written works, including mythologies, folklore, sonnets, and the plays of ancient Greece, Rome, and Shakespeare. Though the meanings and traditions associated with certain plants have changed over time, the human fascination with assigning symbolism to flowers has persevered. Not only does floreography associate meanings with specific plants, but also in the combination and way in which they are presented. When two or more people are well versed in the language of flowers, it essentially becomes a secret code. Messages of all kinds can be conveyed through the giving and receiving of flowers, with details such as bouquet arrangement, wrapping, and even how you hold them carrying significant meaning. Although the interpretation of certain flowers has varied throughout Western culture, a select few varieties received a common meaning, such as the romantic red rose. But as the language of flowers evolved, it eventually became so complicated that entire dictionaries were needed to decipher it. The first such book was produced in 1819 by Louise Cortembeur under the pen name Madame Charlotte de la Tour, titled Les Langages des Fleurs, or The Language of Flowers in English. This book would become the Floriography Bible. During the Victorian era, there were many more rules that people had to follow in order to behave properly in society, especially for those of the upper classes. The Victorians considered themselves to be sophisticated people, so maintaining manners and courtesy in social situations was incredibly important. Rules around socializing could be very strict, even more so in the case of two members of the opposite sex. Since courting was primarily done within the home, any action in public would be met with extreme scrutiny from onlookers. Expectations for the behavior of women were also filled with many restrictions, with the social attitude of the time dictating that ladies should remain polite and demure. Because of all these rules for social interaction, many times it was difficult to express how you might truly feel. This made the language of flowers a more polite and subtle alternative to stating your feelings outright. With a growing cultural interest in botany and the need for a covert method of communication, floreography became widely popular in both England and America during the Victorian age. Learning the meaning and symbolism of different plants and flowers was a very common pastime. Many Victorian homes included a dictionary for this purpose that would act as a guide for people looking to communicate without drawing too much attention to themselves. Due to the limited nature of this language, however, messages would be delivered through yes or no questions and answers, as well as the symbolism that came with specific plants. Although this practice was used by people of varying social classes, it was specifically popular with privileged women. In addition to being wealthy enough for the purchase and giving of flowers, women in the Victorian era were much more limited than their male counterparts. In a time when they were not encouraged to be outspoken or direct with their opinions, floreography provided a method in which they could communicate with their peers, without the risk of damaging their social status. Deciphering a message given through a bouquet of flowers was a complicated task. Not only did you need to have a guidebook to assist you, but if you did not already have a large portion of it memorized, you would need to spend some time analyzing the details of the message. To make things even harder, not all guidebooks had the same interpretation for different plants, meaning that there could be some unintended misunderstandings. In general, a message was made up of the following elements. The species of flower given, in which hand the bouquet was offered, 
the condition of the flowers, and even the placement of the ribbon. For example, responding yes to a previously asked question was done with flowers handed over using the right hand. In order to deliver the answer no, the left hand was used. More confusingly, if the flowers were given upside down, then this would have the opposite meaning of what was typically meant. If the bouquet was bound with a ribbon and it was tied to the left, then the symbolism of the flowers would apply to the giver. If it was tied to the right, then it would refer to the recipient. And of course, if you were just looking to insult someone, you could simply hand them a wilted bouquet and the message would be clear. The meaning of flowers themselves, however, was another matter entirely. Oftentimes, the connotation of a flower came from the appearance or behavior of the plant. For example, the mimosa has leaves that close at night or when touched directly. Because of this trait, it is often interpreted to mean sensitivity or chastity. Some other examples include daffodils that were known to represent unrequited love, daisies meaning innocence and purity, bluebells that were interpreted as kindness, violets symbolizing faithfulness and modesty, and crocuses referring to youth and cheer. If you wish to send a message to your nemesis, then you might consider rhododendron to signal a warning or even the dreaded yellow carnation, which was a symbol of disdain. And of course, the rose is arguably the most famous flower, which has still managed to hold some of its original meaning. The giving of roses contains symbolism right down to the color. The red rose is widely known to symbolize love and desire, as well as passion. But you must be careful. A dark red rose was used to express condolences and mourning. A pink rose could represent happiness, while a white rose stood for purity, innocence, and new beginnings. Similar to the yellow carnation, a yellow rose was a less desirable gift, since it could refer to jealousy, the rejection of love, or infidelity. It was also seen to mean friendship, which made it the go-to flower if you wanted to reject someone's advances. As the years passed, however, the hype of floriography eventually did die down. While there are still some who know the language today, many of the interpretations for common flowers have changed since the height of its popularity. You can still find the language of flowers commonly used in weddings, but in terms of the widespread practice, it is nowhere near what it once was. But like many Victorian traditions, its essence lives on in our culture every time someone receives a bouquet of roses. Hey everyone, thanks for watching! For those of you who are interested in learning more about floriography, I've linked a guidebook from 1846 in the description of this video. It's full of beautiful illustrations and has hundreds of flower meanings, so you should check it out. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, you can also subscribe to my channel and keep up to date on all the fun history videos of the future. But for now, I bid you farewell.